the brave, America. Oh, what a blessed nation we truly are and what a heritage we celebrate. Our legacy is freedom. It was won for us by countless men and women who risked their home, their security, and even their lives so they, for future generations, might call themselves Americans. Pilgrims, explorers, pioneers, soldiers, and citizens, the privileged and the impoverished, the native-born and the naturalized, the infamous and the nameless, heroes, all of them, courageous patriots who knew their strength came from the land and their hope from God. We honor them today and we offer our gratitude. To the brave who built and defended our home, America, the home of the brave. America began in the hearts of patriotic rebels. It began with common men and women seeking the most basic of freedoms, to determine the course of their lives, to pursue quiet joys, and to worship their creator. And so in a Boston Harbor and on a green in Lexington, they gathered. In deserted churches and on midnight roads, their song grew. The church bell that called them rang forth with two messages the danger before them, and the promise of liberty to come.
The Patriot regiments were not the only heroes fighting on the front lines. In that sweltering summer of 1776, some 56 men met in a crowded hall in Philadelphia to craft a document. It was a document that declared their independence to the world and announced their treason. These men knew that in effect they were signing their death warrant. But loving liberty more than life, they took up pens that were more powerful than any sword or musket. And as the bell in the steeple rang that July 4th, they forever fixed their names to freedom. We hold these truths to be self-evident, John Hancock. That all men are created equal, Samuel Adams. That they are endowed by their creator, Benjamin Franklin. With certain inalienable rights, John Adams. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, Thomas Jefferson.
With freedom came growth, and the new country turned its eyes to the West. In response to God's bountiful blessings, daring men and women set out the rich landscape that was now christened America. Resolution, May 12, 1804, Thomas Jefferson, President. I hereby dispatch Captain Lewis and Lieutenant Clark, charging them to explore the Missouri River unto the waters of the Pacific Ocean and map the great expanse of this country. May God grant them providence. Provisions are complete and the company is in readiness and health. We set out at about 4 p.m. in the presence of many of the neighboring inhabitants and proceeded under a gentle breeze up the Missouri to the upper point of the first island, approximately four miles, and camped on the island. Lieutenant William Clark, July 4th, 1804. Today we walked the shore and discovered a high mound where three paths come together. Away, I found away. The land we survey is exceedingly good. September 17, 1804, having for weeks confined myself to the boat, I devoted the day to viewing the interior of the country. Endless grass gives the fields the appearance of beautiful bowling greens. The scenery, already pleasing and beautiful, was further heightened by immense herds of buffalo, deer, elk, and antelope, which we saw in every direction, exceeding as far as the eye can reach. May 26, 1805. We started out early and I ascended to a high plain. From this point, I beheld the Rocky Mountains for the first time. I knew this snowy barrier would slow our way to the Pacific Ocean. But the sun was shining and the points of mountains were covered with snow and the sun shone in such a manner as to give me a most satisfactory view.
September 25th, 1805. After triumphing over the Rockies, we determined to proceed by water. Examine the rapids below and the danger appears too great to hazard our canoes. We proceed on. November 3rd. Today we saw a great number of gulls. The high hills jutting in so close we cannot retreat back. The cliffs increasing in height. Great joy in camp, November 7th, 1805. We are in view of the ocean, this great Pacific Ocean, which we have been so anxious to see. The roaring and the noise made by the waves breaking on the rocky shore is heard distinctly. And on a peak, we raised our flag, at last set to fly over one soil, and one land, and one people. The young nation now stretched from sea to shining sea. It was a new century. The land resounded with the noise of wagon wheels and locomotives. The skies were filled with the songs and prayers of fearless pioneers who called the wilderness home. Yet, just as America began to truly feel settled, the great expanse of her arms reached out once again, but this time they extended across the sea welcoming all who sought a sanctuary of freedom. In 1886, to commemorate 100 years of independence, America received a breathtaking memorial from the other side of the world. It was, quite simply, a torch held high by a proud lady in a harbor 
and it would forevermore light an open door to all who desired life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these the homeless tempest tops to me. I lift my lamp. I lift my lamp. I lift my lamp. Beside the golden door. anyone has ever wondered what it means to declare oneself an American, they need only come to Ellis Island in the New York Harbor. 
There in the shadow of Liberty's great lady, a world of hope was daily realized. Those of us who have been granted and blessed with citizenship since birth can scarce imagine what it means to be granted the extraordinary privilege of saying, I am an American. The oath of citizenship of the United States of America, I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely renounce all allegiance to any foreign state of which I've been a citizen, that I will support and defend the Constitution, that I will bear true faith to the same, and that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States, that I will perform works of national importance, and that, that I, I take this oath freely, freely without, without any mental, mental reservation, reservation or purpose of evasion, evasion. so help me God. Liberty has always come at a price. As the 20th century began in earnest, America found itself drawn into one horrific conflict after another. To the some 25 million men and women who have courageously defended our land and our freedoms, we owe a debt that can never be paid. Somewhere along the line, we seem to have lost the stirring tradition of welcoming our hit fighting heroes home with celebration and parade. But not today. Ladies and gentlemen, we honor our armed forces and remember the many battlegrounds on which they served.
The United States Army in World War I, 4,057,101 soldiers served valiantly on the field of battle with valor and honor. Army veterans from every conflict, please stand and accept our salute. States Navy in World War II, 4,183,466 men and women answered the call to protect our country. Sailors from every conflict, please rise as we salute you. United States Coast Guard during the Korean War, 44,143 members of the Coast Guard fought bravely for freedom's preservation. Coast Guard veterans, please rise for our gratitude and salute. In the Vietnam War, 794,000 Marines served their country with valor and honor. Marine Corps veterans, it's your turn to stand as we salute you. The United States Air Force, during the Persian Gulf War, 50,751 Air Force pilots put their lives on the line for the defense of freedom. Will all Air Force veterans please rise for our salute?
not all our fighting heroes marched home. In wretched trenches, in deserts and jungles, on distant waters, time and again lives were laid down to preserve our liberty. Grief and pride flow together as we honor their memory and remember the cause for which they paid the highest price. Listen, from a French battlefield in 1918, the leader of our armed forces, General Pershing, inspires an anxious nation with a radio dispatch as we remember those who gave their lives in World War I. 3,000 miles from home, an American army is fighting for you. Everything you hold worthwhile is at stake. Invoking the spirit of our forefathers, the army asks your unflinching support to the end that the high ideals for which America stands may endure upon the earth. From the floor of Congress in December 1941, our Commander-in-Chief, Franklin Roosevelt, unites the country in defense of our liberty as we pay tribute to those who died in World War II. Yesterday, December 7, 1941, a day which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. I believe that I interpret the will of the Congress and of the people when I assert that we will not only defend ourselves to the uttermost, but will make it very certain that this form of treachery shall never again endanger us. With confidence in our armed forces, with the unfounding determination of our people, we will gain the inevitable triumph, so help us God. From a newly liberated Berlin, President Ronald Reagan signals the end of 40 years of Cold War as we honor those who sacrificed their lives in Korea, Vietnam, and other foreign lands so that freedom's light would never be extinguished. I know that over the years, many of you have seen the pictures and news clips of the wall that divides Berlin. But believe me, no American who sees firsthand the concrete and mortar, the guard posts, the machine gun towers, the dog runs, and the barbed wire can ever again take for granted his or her freedom or the precious gift that is America. That gift of freedom is actually the birthright of all humanity. And that's why, as I stood there, I urge the Soviet leader, Mr. Gorbachev, to send a new signal of openness to the world by tearing down that wall. Finally, President George W. Bush addressed the country on the evening of September 11, 2001. We remember those who lost their lives that day and those who sacrifice even now to protect us both here and abroad. Tonight, I ask for your prayers for all those who grieve, for the children whose worlds have been shattered, for all whose sense of safety and security has been threatened. And I pray they will be comforted by a power greater than any of us, spoken through the ages in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. This is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. America has stood down any enemies before, and we will do so this time. None of us will ever forget this day. Yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Thank you. Good night. And God bless America.
When the battle called, how did he answer? Did he lead the charge with freedom's cry? When the dust had cleared, was he left standing with the tattered flag spread across the sky? When danger called, how did she answer? Did her courage turn back the night? When the battlefield beckoned, what did they give? They gave their faith. They gave their future. They gave tomorrow calls how will you answer will you choose the road that others run or will you find a path that's seldom taken and dare to chase the rising sun Will you? Ch-
When America calls, what will your answer be? In this time of unrest and compromise, our nation needs people of faith and conviction like never before. Like the colonial patriots, we must be willing to sacrifice personal comfort for the higher principle of equality for all people. Like pioneers, we must never run from facing the unknown, nor be fearful of being the first one to take a step or to take a stand. Like our fellow Americans from every corner of the globe, may we never take our precious citizenship for granted. Like the millions of men and women in our armed forces who have given their lives for our freedom, may we prove worthy of their sacrifice and take unabashed pride in claiming, I am an American. May the God of our fathers always direct our vision and may the colors of our flag be our national prayer.